I just want to start off by saying that it's always great to be politically active than to not be politically active. So I thank you for that. Um, but I do want to start off by saying earlier I was outside protesting, as I usually do on campus, with a sign that says, tear the fascists down. Now, for those who don't know what fascism is, it's an ideology associated with Nazism. As I had this sign not affiliated to anybody, I had a group of individuals come up to me saying openly they were fascists attending your event and called me the F word while I had it. While I had it. It's not loud. Now, I am not here to call you a fascist. I'm not. As I know you're not a Nazi sympathizer, you've never openly sympathized Nazism. I can see that. But people who openly call themselves fascists are here and are not afraid to admit they are fascists. So my question is, will you denounce fascism today as the definition online puts it as an ideology including racial nationalism and authoritarianism today? Yes, uh, will you denounce Marxism as the greatest killer of human beings in the last hundred years? Well, describe Marxism to me. I'm sorry, what? Describe Marxism to me. Uh, the ideology that Mao Zedong, Joseph Stalin, Vladimir Lenin, and Pol Pot employed to the massacre of our country. It did kill millions of people. You're right. Correct. Okay, so I'll denounce fascism. You denounce Marxism. Yeah? Well, I would have to say, like, by definition. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So my thing is that was it Marxism itself or was it a materialistic condition that caused that? Because as Marxists, what we do say is that there's material conditions that contribute to society. Now, you probably aren't familiar with dialectic materialism. I'll try to explain it real quick. No, I, I've read the phenomenology of spirit, and I, I, I know Hegel. But oh, no, yeah. but, but, but tell me, uh, so but why not denounce Marxism? I mean, what, so Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong, Marxist, Lenin, Marxist, Joseph Stalin, mm -hmm. Marxist. I'll denounce Joseph Stalin for you, definitely, yes. Joseph but, Stalin was an authoritarian leader who definitely killed millions of Ukrainians during the export of grain to, of course, um, build up their economy. But there's nothing about, you. you don't think there's anything about the ideology that leads to the suffering and impoverishing or the well, murdering? Well, just like how Hitler called himself a socialist, it's not the ideology, it's just what you actually do at practice. Yes, he did call himself a socialist, yeah. and, but he was not a Marxist. He was not, yeah. But he was, the National Socialist Workers' Party is the actual name of Nazism. But mm -hmm. where has Marxism ever worked? Well, I wouldn't say that Marxism itself has ever actually been tried. Now, of course, you can always say, like, oh, like, you know, that's an easy communist getaway question to it, right? Well, but Marxism has killed a lot more people than Hitler. Everywhere it's tried, it results in famine, impoverishing, death, destruction. I mean, almost every failed country on the planet right now, including North Korea, is some form of a Marxist dictatorship. Well, if, if, so why is it hard to denounce that? Because it's easier for me to denounce fascism. Why, why the struggle to just say, you know, Marxism, bad, evil, end of story? Why can't we agree on that? Well, because if you look at, I'll give the example of North Korea, what we did is that we went in there during the Korean War and destroyed all their factories, right? Now, what did this leave? It's left in a impoverished society where they now had no means to, of course, get their needs because their factories were destroyed. So that's number one on why North Korea. Now, I don't like North Korea. I'm just saying that's one reason has why. has nothing to do with the Marxist no. leader. Nothing? He's so not a Marxist leader. I wouldn't consider himself oh, a Marxist okay. leader. So what, what ideology is, is his? So the ideology of Marxism is simply that workers own the means of production. The workers in North Korea do not own the means of production. Which they have private property rights in North Korea? They don't. Then who owns the means of production? The government does. Oh, okay. Yeah, but in a Marxist society, no, but in a Marxist and that, society, that the would be that would be m m m Marxism? No, it's not, because the workers own the means of production, not the government. But, but who is the government? The government is the people, the bureaucrats. Oh, the bureaucrats so who control the power. Okay, and that would be the people, the bureaucrats, owning the means of production, otherwise known as Marxism? No. No, no, no. You're getting it all wrong. Literally, the word definition of Marxism is that workers own. Workers own the means of production. Right. So where has that ever been tried or worked? You say it's never been tried ever? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Got it. So even though the hammer and sickle mm -hmm. and core Marxist ideology has been invoked repeatedly by these leaders, mm -hmm. you're saying, no, 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 not a Marxist. No, 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 not a Marxist. No, 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 not a Marxist. Is just on a, over a hundred times it has been tried on every single continent from Mugabe in Rhodesia, which became Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. to parts of India, to China, to Korea, to parts of East, Eastern Europe, to Central and South America, to Venezuela. None of that is Marxist, even though they say they're Marxist. Well, it's temper, tampering with Marxism because you have sanctions and you bomb their country. So, I mean, if you want to call that Marxism, then if you sanction and bomb them, I guess that's Marxism. Wait, so w how have we sanctioned and bombed these Marx, uh, like Venezuela? Like Venez Venezuela has sanctions to where we don't buy their oil anymore. Yeah, wh why do you think we're sanctioning them? Because they have Marxist ideologies that don't incorporate with capitalist ideology. Well, yeah, they're also like a quasi-terror state. But let's talk about Venezuela. Mm -hmm. 
Venezuela used to be rich and prosperous when they had the private ownership of minerals. Mm -hmm. Why is Venezuela now one of the poorest countries in South America? What ideology caused that? See, but that's the thing, though. It's not the ideology. It's the practice. Now, you could say the practice is Marxism, but again, do the workers own the means of production in that country? Somebody does. Yeah, somebody does, but not the workers. Yeah, the government, so then, the government owns. So, I mean, in like the purest form of Das Kapital Marxism, mm -hmm. it is the government that comes in and abolishes private property, correct? This is, of course, called the, I think, the dictatorship of the proletariat, I think is what you're referring to. Right. So yeah. you, let me ask you a question. So you believe in this like abstract Marxism that you don't ever want to denounce, even though it's been tried a hundred times. But if again, you say try, but we just said that it hasn't been tried because workers haven't owned means of production. Okay. Well, why do you think that is? Because they use the swan song of Marxism, and Marxism will always result in an oligarchy or a dictatorship. Okay. Because you know why? It's impossible to quote unquote have the workers owns the means of production because we don't share well as human beings. That's why only someone that has and with all possible due respect, an infant understanding of human nature can think communism can work because we're self-interested at our core. And you have an economic system that is built not on private property but on quote-unquote shared goods, you're going to have a dictator on top of it that is going to exploit and terrorize. And so you started this conversation by asking me to denounce fascism, which is responsible for about 10 to 15 million deaths, said ideology. I'm pleading you one more time to denounce Marxism that is responsible for minimum 100 to 120 million deaths. Okay, academics have proven that wrong. That's not true. That's from the Black Book of Communism. That has How many people did Mao kill? Mao killed about 30 to 40 million. Oh, how many people did Stalin kill? Stalin killed about 20 to 30 million. Okay, now we're at like 60 million, and I just yeah. named like two countries, man. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, like, we're out of the gate, and we're at like 60 million. Okay? Yeah. So... I can keep on going, right, if you want to talk famine, impoverishing, lowering of standard of living. But I, what, I, what I want to just reiterate as we close this out, there's this pathological fascination with fascism, 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 and a complete ignoring that Marxism, which is the other side of the authoritarian coin, has been far deadlier, far more costly, and is far more popular. And I'll ask this final question. What do you think has a greater chance of catching on in America? Fascism or Marxism? I would say fascism. Okay. You really think so? I really do believe that. Okay. The only way I would possibly agree with that is the left-wing fascists that shut up people on campuses and allow, you know, try to stop freedom of speech. But what, it's just, I, 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 I'm, I'm perplexed by your position and your inability and your unwillingness to denounce, denounce Marxism. I don't know how many, I mean, another hundred million people dead, maybe you'd change your mind. Thank you. Thanks.